Welcome to the slug discussion on osmosis. This is a cute little picture. This little slug is saying, please no. It's drawn by one of my students, still one of my current students, and it basically shows what she thinks of me. Um, she believes that I'm an evil human being who puts salt on slugs to destroy them. Uh, true confession, when I was a child, I was a bad, disturbed kid, and I used to pour salt. Maybe I just did it twice, but to this day, I am haunted by slugs every single night, and I tell you, it is one of my greatest fears, uh, this group of animal phyla uh, called mollusks. But I do enjoy eating octopus in the form of sushi, but uh, any kind of escargot, just say no. I'm not going to go there. But it's a great discussion to get us started on osmosis. I use my, you know, my crimes in the past to help with student learning. So why does a slug, why does this poor little guy actually die when salt goes on top of him? And uh, it's really sad if you actually see it happen. Please don't do this. Uh, so just trust me, it's not good. Basically, a lot of the moisture is going to end up leaving the slug cell, the, sl the cells inside the slug's body. And so they just basically die as a result of dehydration. It's one of the most horrible things uh, you could see as a kid, just traumatized for life. What's basically happening is osmosis. Now, this concept here really confused me when I was younger because different definitions, like simple shortened forms of the definition made it really confusing. And honestly, in college, it was the first time where I finally understood this higher concentration. I, I always knew what diffusion meant, right? Things move from an area of higher concentration, you got a lot of dots, and then they go to an area where there's low concentration. It makes sense, right? Your brother uh, passes gas, and from the other side of the room, eventually the gas particles reach my nose, and I can smell it. It's c basic common sense. I understand that. But when we're talking about osmosis, the definition, depending on how you say it, can sound really confusing. It still is the diffusion of water molecules, free water molecules from an area of high free water molecule concentration to an area of low free water molecule concentration. But you see how much stuff I have to say to make sure that I'm being accurate. Um, often you'll see it just like this. Water moves from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration. And that's what messed me up. What? Water moves from an area of low concentration to an area of high concentration? And the answer is yes, if you know exactly what you're talking about in terms of concentration. And for that, we mean solutes. In any given, oh, there's a beaker down here. I don't know why I'm drawing another one, but I like to. Here's a beaker. There's a liquid inside. We call that liquid the solvent, the solvent, the stuff that we dissolve inside, salt, sugar, whatever. This is stuff is called the solute. Be really careful about that. The solute, the entire thing is called a solution. A solution consists of a solvent with some solute dissolved in it. So if this is the definition of osmosis, that water moves, uh, uh, this is not the definition, water moves depending on the concentration of solutes. See if we can get a better word here. So osmosis is this, the passive movement of water, get it, okay, passive, no energy required, from low solute concentrations to higher solute concentrations across a semi-permeable membrane. What it's basically telling us is that water moves to saltier places. And when we say saltier, I'm, we're not just talking about sodium chloride. It could be any solute. It could be glucose dissolved in the solution. It could be uh, any other kind of salt, calcium phosphate, uh, sodium phosphate, whatever. Salt is a general term. So when you're doing these, I think to your think to yourself, water moves to saltier places. There's lots of applications. There's an older video I made that talked about this application to a Japanese dish called shabu shabu versus sukiyaki. And in shabu shabu, there's a lot of water, uh, but in sukiyaki, the water you're cooking your vegetables and meat in has a lot of soy sauce and salt in it. So when you put vegetables in there, all the water actually leaves the plants and you end up with these shriveled leaves uh, that are not so yummy to chew. But when I put it into the other form where you're kind of just boiling in, in water, uh, you get you know nice water-filled vegetables because the water tends to move in to the vegetables. So really cool stuff. There is some application for all this osmosis discussion as well too. So let's see if we understand these, uh, these diagrams here. Um, 
Here you have a situation where there's a semi-permeable membrane. This is a special kind of, I don't know, it could be dialysis tubing or some kind of membrane basically that allows water to pass through but doesn't allow larger particles, larger salt particles to pass through. So if I put an equal volume of water on both sides, knowing that water can freely move uh, from left to right or from right to left, and I put more salt into this side and less salt into this side. What will happen is, this looks like magic, the water level will actually shift. And because the salt can't move and the water can, the water will actually move to the right, looking like it's defying gravity. But really, water is just trying to do this. It's trying to balance out the overall uh, concentration of both sides, of both solutions. It's trying to make it equal. Each water molecule wants to be surrounded by a same, uh, sorry, each salt particle wants to be surrounded by the same number of water molecules. So uh, this balancing act needs to happen in order to do that. So remember, if you get confused, just think back to water is going to move. Which side is saltier? This side. So where, which way is water going to go? It's going to go this way. So the level goes up because of the semi-permeable membrane. Same is true for cells. If you put cells into uh, water with different concentrations, different solute concentrations, you can do some horrible things to the cells. If the concentration, of, if, if we're talking about red blood cells, we put them into a beaker or, or a, a solution. If the, red, if the solution outside is a perfect match, that's a smiley face with uh, the solution inside the red blood cells, everything's said to be isotonic. An equal amount of water is moving in that is moving out, and so the red blood cells are fine and dandy. But what happens if you put the red blood cells into a hypertonic solution? With these words, you should always be talking about, be specific. What, are you talking about inside the cell or outside the cell being hypertonic? Hyper in general means more, hypo means less. So when I think hypertonic, I think more salty. So if I put red blood cells into a beaker that is that contains liquid that is more salty, guess what? Water moves to saltier places. So the water inside the red blood cells is going to move out into the solution. And then we get these shriveled, ugly red blood cells. That's very sad. Now, the other situation, I'm sorry, I'm writing, drawing all over this just because I have this cool technology that enables, able, that enables me to do so. I'm going to stop it a little bit later. Okay, I'm stopping right now. I can't help myself, I need to continue. If I put the red blood cells into a solution that is less salty than the red blood cells, less salty, where's water gonna move? It's gonna move to saltier places. So what's more salty? Actually, the inside of the red blood cells, there's more solute inside. There's all kinds of solutes that are in there. So guess what? Water actually moves through the cell membrane inside and these poor red blood cells actually end up bursting. So that's when you put things into a hypotonic solution or a hypertonic, so this is less salt, less salt. I'm gonna have to erase my scribbles in a second. Iso means the same. So isotonic means the, the outside solution and the inside internal salt solute concentrations are the same. Okay, hope that makes sense. So here's a real life application. If you need to donate a organ to somebody and they live uh, four hours away, I need to transport, say I'm donating my kidney, my left kidney, not my right kidney, I like my left one. I'm gonna donate my right kidney so in order to transport that, obviously someone's got to cut it out of my body, but to transport that across the city uh, during the four-hour journey, they need to keep my kidney well hydrated, right? They can't just leave it on a, on a plate. So they have to put it in fluid to keep it hydrated, but that fluid concentration needs to match the fluid concentration inside the actual kidney. Otherwise, water is going to move into the kidney or water is going to move out and it's going to cause damage to the cells. So we need to avoid osmosis in these donor organs because the cells could shrink or burst. And so we need to bathe them in a solution that is said to be isotonic, just like we said here, where we use the same osmolarity. Osmolarity is a cool word that means the relative, the concentration of solutes in a particular thing or a solution.